Welcome to Rock City Cookies, where we talk about all things cookies. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon to be notified when we upload a new video. Thanks for watching. Hello, sweet friends. Thank you so much for joining me today as we do a Harry Potter set in honor of Harry Potter's birthday, which is on July 31st. I did this set for a little boy named Dylan who loved both the good and dark side of Harry Potter and wanted to make sure I included both. So sit back and relax as I go through all 11, yes, 11 designs in this set. What better way to begin than to start with the legend himself, Harry Potter. To begin, I outlined my hexagon cookie with a thick icing consistency. Then with a thinner icing called a flood consistency, I filled in the hexagon. One of the iconic colors in Harry Potter is this Gryffindor red, so you will see me use it quite a bit throughout the set. With an edible marker, draw on Harry Potter's iconic lightning bolt scar. With a thick consistency icing in the color black, outline the rim of Harry Potter's glasses. The image that I am using here as my template for his face, I found on Google by searching for Harry Potter face clip art and a ton of images just like this popped up. Now that we have done Harry's scar and his glasses, he is not complete until we do his iconic brown hair. With a thicker icing, pipe the outline of his hair first. This gives you a guide to come back with your medium consistency icing to fill in the rest of his hair. And once you have completely filled in his hair, go back with your scribe and pop out any air bubbles that you might see. Spread out the icing so it's nice and even. That just helps to prevent any cratering when the cookie goes to dry. And that's it. The Harry Potter cookie is done. Okay, let's switch over to the dark side and let's make a Dementor cookie. Now, I want to be honest with you guys, when Dylan's mom specifically asked for a Dementor, I had no idea how I was going to try to portray something on a cookie that is almost ethereal. I thought about it for days, I dreamed about it, and one night I literally woke up in the middle of the night and I knew exactly what I was going to do. As always, I outline and flood my cookie first pop any air bubbles and let the flood base dry for quite a while before I move on to the next step. Making sure the icing is completely dry before moving on to the next step is especially important in this cookie because I'm going to be painting over the entire surface of this cookie, which means it needs to be very, very dry to hold up to my paintbrush. I knew I wanted to age the background of this cookie, so I decided to mix high grain alcohol. Now I personally use 190 proof clear alcohol and I mix that with my food gel colors. The mixture needs to be pretty thin so make sure you add a lot of high grain alcohol to just a little bit of food coloring. As always I will link everything that I use in the description box below but the color I used here was called ivory and with my mixture of high grain alcohol and the ivory food gel coloring I use a paintbrush only used for cookies and I dab that mixture all over my cookie. And because I'm going for an aged look, I don't have to worry about this step being perfect. Now it's time to move on to our Dementor. The paint mixture dries pretty quickly, so you don't have to wait too long between painting the background and outlining the Dementor. Once again, I went to Google and I found a Dementor silhouette that would work well with the vision that I had in my head. I outlined the entire image and then I went back with a thick consistency icing and filled in the inside. You will see why in just a minute, but this does not have to be perfect. Just make sure that there is icing all the way in the inside of the Dementor and you'll be good to go. Okay, once he is filled in, you are going to want to grab a paintbrush that is for food use only and start drawing dragging the icing. Start dragging the icing from the top down to the bottom using the outline you made earlier as a guide for your stopping points at the end of the Dementor. And just continue to move around the icing until you think that it looks like an ethereal creature. And that's it. I'm so glad that the vision I had came to life and it actually worked. The Dementor is done. All right, now it's time to play some Quidditch. And what is a game of Quidditch without the golden snitch? 
Once again, I'm going to outline and flood this cookie with the Gryffindor Red. A little side note, this plaque is one of the very first cookie cutters that I ever purchased. This is the Nancy from Kaleidocuts. It is one of my all-time favorite, most used cookie cutters. I'll be sure to link it below, but it's so versatile and I have used this more times than I can count. I highly recommend. As always, when you're done flooding, pop any of those air bubbles. It really does make a very big difference in your final outcome. Now, like everything with Harry Potter, there is a ton of stuff out there, but to find this specific clip art that I used for this snitch, you're going to want to search for golden snitch wings clip art, and this one should pull up. I wish I could say the snitch is going to be super easy. It looks so easy, but actually it took me quite a while because every step requires some drying time in between. So for the first pass through, you're going to want to do the middle portion of the snitch as well as one pass through the wings. Now with the wings, to add dimension, when you are piping, you are going to want to make sure that you pipe your lines as close as you can together without them touching. You will then want to put your cookie under a fan to let this layer dry before coming back and adding the details on top of the snitch. If you rush this process, the center part of the snitch will actually collapse under the weight of the new icing. So you wanna make sure your center dot is very dry before doing the step. And remember, details make all the difference in the world with the snitch. So even though it may seem like all these steps are unnecessary, they actually make a huge difference. It's now time to pipe a second layer onto the wings, just trying to go with your icing in between all the holes that you left the first time through. And once again, when you are done with this step, Step, make sure the icing dries really well before moving on. Now that our icing work is done on our snitch, it's time to make him golden. I prefer to use Truly Mad Plastics Super Gold mixed with high grain alcohol, the same exact alcohol that I used earlier with my food gel coloring to make the aged background. You will mix your high grain alcohol with the gold dust until you have a nice paste to paint onto your icing. I usually get the medium size gold from their website, which I will link in the description box below, and that container lasts me a really long time. So using a small paintbrush, I get into all of the areas of the snitch, making sure that I'm getting good coverage. Painting on a cookie with any sort of metallic finish usually does take a little bit of time, but if you make sure that your gold is not too saturated with your high grain alcohol, then you should be able to do this process one time and maybe go back a second time with just some small touch-ups, but you should get pretty good coverage your first pass through. I do recommend that when you're painting, you do it from all angles. That does help to get better coverage if you go back through your icing and make sure you're going at it with multiple angles just to get into all the nooks and crannies. I was lucky I only had to do it one time and that's it, the golden snitch is done. Next up, he who shall not be named. Oh wait, I think I remember reading somewhere that fear of a name increases fear of the thing itself. So next up is Voldemort. Also, I'm fully aware that my inner nerd is definitely showing in this tutorial. Sorry. Now with this cookie, I did make sure again, because I'm using marker work on top of the cookie that it dried for a long time in front of a fan. And by a long time, I mean at least six hours before I did this work on top. I found this image by searching for Lord Voldemort shadow art. Voldemort's face is kind of complicated and I was afraid that if I attempted to use icing to do this design, that I would lose a lot of those important details. So instead, I pulled out my edible marker and traced around the entire outline of this image. Now that the outline is done, I can turn off my projector, which will allow me to see the outline so much better, more clearly, and I'm able to fill in with my edible marker all the black spaces. And as you can see, since I'm literally coloring on top of the cookie, the icing has to be really dry or else while you're coloring, your marker will actually punch through your icing. So 
trust me, make sure it's really dry before you do this step. A quick tip about packaging up a cookie that has a lot of edible marker. You are going to want to take a dry brush and cornstarch and brush over the entire surface of this cookie. That cornstarch helps to soak up any remaining moisture, which helps the bag from not sticking to the cookie as well as it prevents any kind of smearing. So with this much edible marker, I would go over this several times with cornstarch just to help prevent any issues later. All right, Lord Voldemort is done. Our next design is a letter from Hogwarts. I don't know why, but when I was reading the books, I always envisioned letters from Hogwarts arriving in kind of an aged envelope. So when I made this design, I kind of wanted to make that vision that I had in my head come to life. So the first thing you need to do is outline your sections of the envelope and then flood one section at a time and let dry before moving on to the next. When doing this design, I thought about what a real envelope looked like. So I flooded the bottom section first, I let it dry, then I did the two side sections and let it dry, and finally at the end I did the flat last and let it dry as well. I really only let each section dry for just a little while, just long enough to get a nice crust over the top before I moved on to the next section. You don't have to let each section dry completely before flooding the next area. However, once that last section has been flooded, you are going to want to make sure that you give the cookie substantial drying time because you are going to be using that aging process with your paintbrush on top of the icing so it needs to be really nice and dried before you move on to the next step. And just like we did with the Death Eater cookie, mix high grain alcohol with ivory gel food coloring and with a paintbrush dab all over the envelope to really give it an aged appearance. Let that dry for just a few minutes and then you're ready to write on top of the cookie. Now the image that I used for this template is actually an original image from my first Harry Potter set that I did about a year before this one. I could not find the original graphic that I used for that set, so instead what I did is I projected just an image of my completed cookie from my first set onto this cookie and traced it. And you are more than welcome to do the same thing. So you can go to my Instagram, find my Harry Potter cookies, and project that image onto your cookie and use it just like I did. And that goes for any design that you see here on my YouTube. I make these tutorials so that you can use them. And that goes for any tutorial that you see here on YouTube that I have done. You are always welcome to use any designs that I teach you. That is the whole point of me doing this YouTube is to teach you how I do certain designs, how I do certain sets so that you too can do them for your clients. So please feel free to copy whatever I do for your own personal use for your clients. Just tag me in it so I can be your biggest cheerleader and share your awesome work. All right, once you've outlined the Hogwarts sill, the out post, then with your red icing, create a little wax seal and your letter from Hogwarts is done. Because Dylan, the birthday boy, loved the dark arts part of Harry Potter, I decided to try to keep a healthy balance between the dark and the light in this set. So for this design, I went with Voldemort's wand. One great thing about this set is that you do not need to order special cookie cutters for these designs. I just went through and found all sorts of different shapes and plaques and used those as the background for all of the designs that I did. Now that my icing has dried, I'm just taking a thick white piping consistency icing and outlining Voldemort's wizard wand. This is one of the easier designs in this set. You actually don't want your icing to be too smooth. It adds to the realistic look of the wand. So just put your icing all the way down the wand, all the way down the handle, 
and then you are going to want to let that dry. I did use my scribe a little bit to smooth out some portions just to make sure there was no visible air bubbles. However, I let that dry and then I used my brown edible marker and added a few more details. My final touch was to take a black edible marker and at the bottom of his wand just write the name Voldemort so it was clear what this design was. And there you have a completed wand. It's time to make sure the birthday boy himself is celebrated in this set, so let's make a cookie for Dylan. Using the same cookie cutter that I used for the golden snitch, I am outlining and piping this cookie yellow. Now this is kind of a golden yellow, and again, it's a reference to the Gryffindor colors. After you have outlined and flooded your cookie, you are going to let that dry, and while the cookie is drying, you will need to go to defont.com and download the font Harry P. I'll be sure to list it in the description box below, but in case the link ever doesn't work, just make sure you Google a Harry Potter font. And if you can't find one on defont.com, there are lots of other font sharing websites where you can find a Harry Potter font including Etsy. After you have found a Harry Potter font that you like, you will then need to install that onto whatever app you use for your fonts. I personally prefer to use the app Fonto, and I'm able to type out Dylan's name, choose the Harry Potter font, and then I can save that as an image and project it onto my cookie. Using a thick icing, I outline Dylan's name and then I go back with a medium consistency icing and I fill in the letters to create a three-dimensional look. Then once all of the areas are filled, I take my scribe and smooth out the icing as well as remove any visible air bubbles. And the birthday boy's cookie is done. Our next design is going to be a combination of both the dark and the light side of Harry Potter. I chose to use a rectangle shape for this cookie cutter. Again, I'm using all different shapes and plaques that I had in my stash, so this one is going to be a rectangle, which is also the shape I used for the Hogwarts letter. As always, outline, flood, pop any air bubbles. Okay, so we're going to start in the middle of our cookie and do a Death Eater mark. Now, this is a tattoo, a marking that most of the people that followed Voldemort had somewhere on their body. This was kind of a signal that this was somebody that's from the dark arts. So, I'm going to do the Death Eater mark, which you can just Google Death Eater mark and a clip art will pull up that there are tons of them out there just like this one. So, Death Eater mark, and I'm using my edible marker and I'm tracing that down the middle of my cookie. And as always, you need to make sure your cookie was really dry before you did that marker work. And because I thought it was a little too plain to just do the Death Eater mark, I wanted to also include a charm. So using that same Harry P font that I got off defont.com, I typed out Expecto Patronum. This spell is used to ward off the Dementors, which are the Guardians of Azkaban. And as we all know from the wonderful Michael Scott, the Dementors are the worst part of prison. And this design is done. What is a Harry Potter set without a broom? So let's make a Nimbus 2000. Now you have seen me use this shape before. I used it for Voldemort's wand. So I actually like to repeat certain shapes and cookie cutters throughout a set. So I did that all the way throughout this Harry Potter set. I tried to use each shape twice, but how I made it different was if I used it once in a certain color, I would make sure that the next time I flooded it in a different color. So Voldemort's wand, I flooded with that Gryffindor red, and here with the Nimbus 2000, I'm actually flooding the base with that Gryffindor yellow. So that helps with the cohesiveness. You get the same shapes repeated throughout the set, yet it's still different colors, which also tie in to the set as a whole. Because when I go and I make my designs for any set that I'm making, I think about what they are going to look like all together on a 
plate. So I want to make sure that no matter what cookie you have, that it matches all the other cookies in some way. Repeating shapes, repeating colors, repeating designs, and repeating techniques are my favorite way to accomplish that. All right, now that the base has dried, we are going to do the broom handle first. So this is the Nimbus 2000 clip art I found, and I traced the broom handle, and now I'm doing the bristles on the end of the broom. And I'm gonna do this in layers so that it has that 3D dimension look. So do the first layer first, let that dry just a few minutes, and come back and add more bristles, and let that dry, and then come back and add a third layer of bristles. To finish off the Nimbus 2000, let's add the little metal bits that hold Hold the bristles together. Let's write out Nimbus 2000 with our edible marker just like we did Voldemort's wand and when the metal part dries we're going to paint that with our gold mixture again tying back to the golden snitch and Harry's broom the Nimbus 2000 is finished. Okay we have made it to our 10th of 11 designs so let's get started. This design will be the sorting hat from Hogwarts. Once again, we're using the hexagon shape. It's the same shape that we used for Harry Potter's profile earlier, but this time we're going to use our tan color because we are going to age the background again. So as always, outline, flood, pop in the air bubbles, and let it dry completely. Now, once again, you're gonna see me age this cookie using that high grain alcohol and food gel mixture. I wanted to clarify, I wait until all of my tan pieces on all of these cookies that I did. So with the Dementor, with the Letter to Hogwarts, and now with the Sorting Hat, I did all of those at the exact same time. So I waited until my icing was dry on every single one of those cookies. And then I came back and I did this aging process on all of them at once so that it made it very quick. I only had to make my mixture one time and then I was able to do all of the cookies at once which sped up the process quite a bit. All right now that the mixture has dried let's add our sorting hat on top of this cookie. We want to give some depth to our sorting hat so the first thing we're going to do is add some black areas to our hat. So we're going to add a little bit of black icing at the bottom of the sorting hat, the rim of the hat, and we're also going to add some black at the sorting hat's eyes and mouth. We need just enough icing to spread out, so don't put a ton, but just put a little bit of a squiggly line of icing. And then with a flat paintbrush, go ahead and spread out that icing, making sure that with your projected image that the black areas are covering where his eyes and mouth will be. Now it's time to grab your brown icing. You want this to be a thick piping consistency and outline the sorting hat. In your outlining, you are gonna wanna make sure that you outline the mouth and the eyes, leaving some black exposed so that we can see the shadow effect in our cookie. Now with a medium consistency icing, come back and fill in all of the other areas of the sorting hat. Now you're going to want to let the two different parts of the hat be separate sections. So to achieve that, you actually need to let one part of the hat dry before you pipe the other part. So in this situation, I piped the upper part of our hat first, I let that dry, and then I did the brim of the hat second and let that dry. Now my question of the day is, what Harry Potter house do you belong to? Personally, I am a Ravenclaw. Okay, after you have flooded both sections of the sorting hat, you need to let this dry pretty well again, just like with everything else. We're going to be doing work on top of it with a paintbrush, so you need to make sure the sorting hat is dry hard enough that it can handle the weight and the pressure of a paintbrush. So with your thick piping brown icing, you're going to want to put some icing on top of your sorting hat. And then with a very small paintbrush, dab your icing all over the sorting hat. This technique will give our hat a little bit of texture. This technique is great to mimic a lot of other textures like sand on a beach. I've used it for mud. I've used it as the fuzz on tennis balls. I've used it as the fur on bears. I've also used it as the fabric on couches or pillows. So it's a great technique to put in your back pocket to use in a lot of great ways. Okay, now the sorting hat is covered. 
I'm gonna let that completely dry and then I'm gonna rough up my hat just a little bit. I'm doing so with just an edible marker with brown edible marker. I'm just going back over my sorting hat, adding some lines. It With the texture, it really kind of roughs it up and it gives it that kind of aged sorting hat look. And our sorting hat is done. Alright, we made it to our final design. On this design, you will see the platform nine and three quarters. Now I'm going to make a confession. This design actually didn't make it to the final stage of picture taking. When I made this set, I actually had my sweet little one-year-old youngest kiddo grab the two cookies that I had for this design and ruin them. Now, thankfully, I had plenty of the other designs to send to the client, but I am sad that I wasn't able to take any pictures of this design. To make this two-toned cookie, I did the two outer sections of the circle first. So I did those in our Gryffindor red, I let them dry completely, and then I came back and did the Gryffindor yellow in the middle. I knew that the design I would be putting on top of this cookie would be pretty simple, it's just numbers, so I decided to make the background more interesting by using both Gryffindor colors and doing this two-toned cookie. Now that the base of the cookie has dried, it's time to add our nine and three quarters on top. I knew I didn't want to add the lettering platform nine and three quarters, I just wanted the nine and the three quarters. So I found an image that had the numbering how I liked it, and then I just left off the platform. So this was clip art that I just used and was able to copy onto my cookie. So first, with a thick icing, I outlined all the areas of the numbers, and then I went back with a medium consistency icing and filled in the numbers. This was done before I was consistently using a squiggly line in those small areas to help keep the icing from cratering. So make sure if you're doing this set that you do a little bit of a squiggly line before you pipe your medium consistency icing on top. And we did it! That's the end of our Harry Potter tutorial. Happy birthday, Harry Potter! Thanks everyone for watching. Like and subscribe down below, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye!